We offer courses in journalism, business management, human resource, ICT, among others. For more information, contact us on the details on your screen. Geisha Shea Butter and Honey. Made with the goodness of Shea Butter to moisturize dry skin. Be strong and last long. Close up deep action with antibacterial formula and deep cleaning gel keeps your teeth clean and protected. Close up deep action. Enjoy long lasting fresh breath and more. This is NTV. Just in time for your most comprehensive news bulletin at this hour. Welcome to NTV at 1. I am Julian Ambokol. A multi-agency team of the government officials is set to address the media on the status of preparations ahead of the full resumption of learning activities starting on Monday. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha is leading the briefing, which is likely to touch on safety of learners' infrastructural concerns and the syllabus recovery. Our reporter Leila Mohammed is at the Kenyatta International Convention Center here in Nairobi, where the briefing is set to take place. Leila, what issues are likely to come out of this? Well, Amboko, there are four key I, uh, cabinet secretaries who are here today. And we begin with the Ministry of Interior and National Coordination, as well as the Ministry of Health and then Education and ICT. Uh, remember, for the last uh, 10 or so years, the Ministry of Information, uh, ICT, Education, Health have all been correlated in one way or the other. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced so many sectors to shut down, including education, which is setting uh, to get back to the physical classroom in less than 24 hours so each of these cabinet secretaries will be giving us a brief on their particular docket however at the end of the day when we're looking at in terms of uh, the ministry of interior we are going to expect the cs of interior to touch on key issues uh, regarding maybe the curfew uh, maybe later in the day we were hoping president urukinata could touch on that uh, remembering that the 60 day window he had given for that to Laps will be uh, lapsing this evening as children are going back to school on the 4th, that is Monday, tomorrow morning. So those are key issues that we hope uh, to be said in this briefing this day. Uh, when it comes to comes to matters of health, uh, then we will be seeing uh, CS Kagwe talk about the laid down laws in how the students will be relating with, with each other in uh, the schooling system. Remember, they had given very strict guidelines for social distancing, physical distancing within the classrooms. Yesterday, Professor George Magoha said it will be difficult to ensure that there is complete 100% physical distancing in the classroom. However, he says, despite the fact that they will be not exactly 1.5 meters away from each desk every single child will be expected to be fully in mask gear every time they're in school and that will be also a particular issue for their teachers the guardian the, the school uh, teams that are working there especially the guards and the support staff just to ensure that they curb the further spread of COVID-19 in the class system yesterday also the CS for education was saying that the idea by many private institutions asking uh, their parents to bring in things like um, the cleansing systems, he was saying that is not important. It's not the time for buying lots and lots of sanitizers. Just use basic water and soap 
and uh, much more should be happening so it's a brief by entire key stakeholders within government and we're expecting some of those key details to be spoken to remember uh, cs uh, magoha has said and said before that every parent will be expected to take back their children the interior ministry using the chiefs and the police system will be ensuring that parents take their kids back to the classroom tomorrow and we expect but between 4th and Friday the end of the week all students across the country will be able to make it and this will be only important if uh, some issues like uh, cutting down the the curfew to enable maybe even evening travel will be convenient for many parents across uh, uh, the nation so we are still waiting for that uh, press conference to happen uh, for, for the moment i take you back uh, to julian samboko in studio Many thanks, Leila Mohammed, for that brief. Clearly, that should be a loaded statement coming from the government. Staying with Matters Education, the Anglican Church of Kenya is calling on the government to prioritize psychosocial support for the millions of pupils and students who are set to return to school in under 24 hours. Archbishop Jackson Olesapit notes that spiritual and emotional guidance and counseling will be a key part of getting the children in the right frame of mind after months away from the classroom. The Anglican Church has partnered with various youth groups move across schools offering counseling sessions our education sector was one of the hardest hit because our children have been at home for a very very long time and uh, we were not very sure how they were going back to school fear has gripped many parents even in October when there was uh, uh, the announcement that children are going back to school and the numbers were increasing but uh, the decisions were made that we do it this January and we want to thank God that January has come and our children are getting ready to go back to school. We thank God that those who have gone, the class 4, class 8 and the form 4s, the Lord went to protect them even in those moments and we still trust him for more protection even as the rest of the classes join in and that's why we have come today to this cathedral to bring a few of you representing all the children in Kenya so that we may have a moment of prayer and a moment of encouraging each other that the Lord is with us. And on some sad news, a family in Transoya is asking for justice for their 23-year-old daughter Immaculate Haimba who was thrown out of a Matatu and ran over under unclear circumstances. Immaculate was left paralyzed from the waist down as a result of the accident which happened in 2017. She was on her way to Magadi Hospital where she was working as an intern. She only remembers being thrown out suddenly while en route. Her family says the high cost of treatment and physiotherapy in the aftermath of the accident has drained them financially as especially because they still have a pending bill at the hospital running into millions of shillings. Hali ya maisha ilikuwa ngumu sana. Kwanza kumpeleka physiotherapy ilikuwa natakana haende kwa wiki mara tatu hospitali. Iyo ni karama kufikia kiwango ya miezi miwili nikashindwa kabisa na itaka naendelee kwenda physiotherapy basi nikaanza tu kumfanyia huduma hapa nyumbani kufanya mazoezi ya kutembea na kujinyosha nikaunda tu hata spring ya kienyeji anajinyosha mkono yake ili mazoezi mwili ipate kuwa nafuu tena ime affect mashango ya kawaida juu kama mbwa ikianza saa hizi siwezi enda kwa siwezi enda kwa nyumba peke yangu lazima mashikilio ni niende kwa nyumba nisimnyeshewe na na siwezi fanya shughuli zangu za kawaida mimi ndio namshukulikia na muosha hata akienda kwa lu na kawaida hali ya reserve sisi hatuna na zile toilet za kuflash And on to another sad story. Two police officers attached to Kamkunji station in Nairobi have died following an argument between them. An officer drew his gun and shot at his colleague and later turned the gun on himself. Nayoma Sampao reports that the authorities have launched investigations into the incident. Kamukunji police station in Nairobi, the scene of a Saturday night crime. Constable Lawrence Ewoi is said to have picked a quarrel with a female colleague identified as Maureen Aching for undisclosed reasons outside the police station. 
A boy then opened fire. Kwa na agi na wengine waki wameka hapa kwa gari. So karudi nyuma ya gari ya land cruiser. Haka kuja hawa kwa hapa mbele. Haka piga mmoja mkono. Na huyu msichana alikuwa mekaa kwa kiti ya, ya passenger. Na ya kapigwa risasi. He shot a chain at close range. She was pronounced dead on arrival at Kenyatta National Hospital. Iwoi later returned to the station and took his own life. Wakati anafika hapa alianza kupiga marisasi. So askari wakaenda kwa angalia wakifuata yeye. Alafo wakati wali msimamisha. Uh, akawa na shoot askari. Badaye alifigwa mgu risasi moja. Na wakati aliona atashikwa akajifiga risasi manyewe. Investigations into the matter have begun. Nayoma Sampao, NTV. And onto the political field, ODM leader Raila Odinga has asked his opponents to delink him from the failures of the Jubilee government and focus on reforms. Raila was speaking during a meeting with Muslim leaders in Mombasa where he says corruption continues to be a major cancer in the country. Alongside the religious leaders, Raila has urged Kenyans to desist from ethnic animosity. <laughs> pale ni tumetoka sasa unaona wale ambao walikuwa pale ambao walifanya walifu wameruka sasa wanasema atio Raila ndio mwalifu Raila ajenje kwa serikali ako nje ya serikali ili ambao tumefanya mpaka wa leo ni kujaribu kutekeleza yale tulikubaliana na huyu lakini yule ambaye amekuwa na hiyo wake enzi ile ya kwanza amefanya mjadala kama tano sasa tena miaka mitatu wamefanya wanaanza kuruka sasa sema yeye anasema yeye si responsible mambo ya BBI. Mambo ya BBI. Anakula mshahara, akona security, ana kila kitu ndani hii hiyo serikali. Alafu yeye anaanza kudhulumu hii hiyo serikali, anasema Raila ndio yuko responsible. Si unafi. Na wakati huo mimi nilikuwa nasikia wakiongea wanasema tunataka kumaliza enzi ya mzungu ili tulete serikali yetu ya Kiafrika tuweze kupigana na maadui wetu makubwa matatu ugonjwa ujinga umaskini sasa kaongeza utawala mbaya ya dhuluma na kimbao And staying with politics, Kandara member of parliament Alice Wahome is now accusing President Uhuru Kenyatta of championing a change of the constitution for selfish political reasons aimed at extending his grip on power. This comes as Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia is vying to go all the way in 2022. Our senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Murethi has more. For the second year running, Kandara MP Alice Wahome, who broke ranks with President Uhuru Kenyatta, and now Deputy President William Ruto's biggest defender is turning the heat on the president, accusing him of destroying bridges already built in place. In a tough statement to media, the second time MP lashed out at the president for pushing for a referendum she affirms is not critical to the nation at the moment. It is not possible for one person, irrespective of the fact that we respect you and we know, we know that you are the head of state, for one person to carry the dream alone, to be able to say they discern a constitutional moment on behalf of Kenyans. According to Ahome, the push for a constitutional change is personal for the president. You are attempting to walk the path of changing the constitution to retain control of state power, while even outside, through a facade of democracy, is not present. We must vehemently reject this new tactic. Wahome, who remains steadfast in her support to the deputy president, holds that President Kenyatta has betrayed those he helped him ascend to power for new allies. President Uhuru Kenyatta, I said then, and I still reiterate, remains the single biggest threat to the constitution, democracy, devolution, and economy in this country. Meanwhile, Muranga Governor Mwagiwairia now says he will not abandon his presidential ambitions for 2022 when his two terms as governor come to an end. 
Wairia considers himself the second most experienced politician from Mount Kenya, having won a second term, and representing the interests of the region at the national level is what it's left. Mimi nataka kuungwa mkono na watu wa Mulanga, na watu wa Central na watu wale wengine. Mimi ifikapo 2022, mimi nitajijiwasilisha katika kinganganilo cha ulaiz wa taifa ya Kenya. Wairia now joins a long list of politicians from Mount Kenya who have either expressed interest in the top seat or deputizing a contender from another part of the country. Mimi naomba watu wa Mulanga wanipatie kula 1600, watu wa Kirinyaga wanipatie zao 1400, watu wa Nyandara wanipatie 1400, watu wengine, watu wengine wanipatie, wakisi wanipatie, Luia na wale wengine tukae kwa kikao. Wale wengine walete kula zao, mimi nilete kula zangu, tu, tuongee kama taifa. Wairia says he will run for president on his civic renewal party ticket. Kennedy Moredi, NTV. And still on matters politics, political leaders have been urged to separate the 2022 general election from the constitutional change under the Building Bridges Initiative. BBI coordinator in the Mount Kenya region, Lenny Kivuti, says the constitutional reforms debate will be over by June. Yule anataka kiti kuanzia July you can go full throttle Tutakuwa tumemaliza mambo ya constitution Why is it important You make a constitution and you keep on reviewing it making it better for the citizens Not for anybody for all citizens now, constitution does not mean making a new one. Una review, ile at 2010, unaona hapa, ile pesa tulipatiana ya county, 15%, sipitari ya kuna dawa. And on that note, NTV at 1 takes a quick break. We'll be right back with a lot more stories. To help fight the spread of coronavirus, learn LifeBoy's hand washing habits. Wash hands with soap or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Together, let's help fight the spread of coronavirus in Kenya. This Christmas, Jaza Jaza, what's up? Babu, there's a hooping. One million bob to be won. All you have to do, Niku Piga shopping worth 1,500 and above. Now Kondani a draw. <laughs> Krisi, Ibambe na Quick Mart. Quick Mart, fresh and easy. soft and glowing skin new geisha black soap with activated charcoal to give you soft and glowing skin new geisha black soap and new geisha moringa Welcome back to NTV at One. After the festivities of the festive season, it is now time to journey back to various places of work for Kenyans. In Eldoret, thousands of travelers seem stranded at various bus termini. Our reporter Gabriel Kudaka joins us live from there. Gabriel, how is it looking like on the streets? Thank you so much. Uh, this is not a shuttle in Eldoret uh, stage, and there are so many passengers who are here who are stranded, 
struggling to get minutes back to Nairobi. Most of them say they had to, first of all, actually in the new year with their family members before traveling back to their places of work. Uh, some have been here since 6 in the morning without being like to get means back to Nairobi. Let me talk to some of them right now. Mamu naituwa jina, uniko nileke wapi lafu lukua hali kuna mnageni kwa sasa? Mene, kwa mazina naituwa Esther. Mene mkaja wa hapa Eldoret. Nilikuwa nimeamuka mapema subwe. Wakati wa saa kuminambili. Mkaja hapa stage, kithania nikifiga, ndapata gari. Lakini changamoto kubwa mba ya metukumba ni kwa ma. Gari mekua shida sana. Watu wa meangaika. Kwa kupata means ya kuenda Nairobi. Zaidi ya hayo, mambo ya fea. Fea imenda juu sana. Waka wengi wetu, wengine wanashangaa, watafanya na mnagami. Asante, madam. Unaituwa jafluku na ikiwa pandu, unuko nileke wa api dada? Mi kwa majina naituwa Shaila Shambula. Mimi ni mkaji wapa Eldoret, lakini natoka Moi. Nilifika wapa muenda wa saine. Mbaka saai hata sijabuku gari. Nimeambiwa masa ya kubuku gari, isha isha ni saa sita. Mbaka kesho tena saa kumi. Sasa tunashindwa tufanya aje. Tafadhali tunaomba serekali. Waone shidenye wanainchi tunapitia. Nimeshinda kwa jua the whole day. Nilale ya hapa tena. Kwa sababu siyezi ni karudi moi university. Nimetumia shilingi miambili. Asante sana. Na before I wind up, there's a person here, the manager of the North Shuttles. How is the situation na bin na mnageni ya magari kwa sasa? Situation sa hii ni mbaya sana. Kwa sababu hatuwe jaweza kukabiliana na watajiri na wateja vile walivyo kuja. Kwa sababu kumanisha hawa wenye wameketi hapa. Wamegoja tangu wa subui. Maka sasa, lakini tunakikishia watapata gari kwa sababu hile masaa yenye tunapimia masaa yenye akafio. Hili kuweza mtu ya kuweza kufika on time in Nairobi. Na mbona meangeza babe? Day tumeongeza kwa sababu kutoka Nairobi kuja hapa, magari haipati watu wengi wa ukuja. Napata watu wa chacha. Sa hii tabidi ya kwamba tukaribiane na hiyo garama, hili tuweza kuogesa hiyo kidogo. Kulikana na North Rift. Sisi ndiyo wenye tu tunaweza tumeogesa bayi ya chini. Habu sisi tunafanya elfonja na miyasaba. Na wengine wanafanya elfumbiri na miyatano na elfumbiri. Asante sana buona maneja. Now, most of them are calling the government to relax the curfew restrictions to enable them to travel without hitches. Back to you. Much appreciated, Gabriel Kudaka, for giving us a pulse of how it is on the roads as many try to commit back to their stations of work and schools. Speaking about schools, various institutions across the country continue to prepare for the return of learning activities. Gina Kirori looks at the activities and the concerns ahead of tomorrow. A disinfecting machine sits ready outside this school in Kiamba, ready to tidy up the space ahead of Monday. But as schools reopen, safety and infrastructural concerns are still abound. The Parliamentary Administration and Security Committee is urging the Ministry of Education to devise ways of minimizing congestion in schools to achieve social distancing. I have only one fear. If we are to comply to the social distance that is required by the health ministry, and that is what the schools are going to take, it will be a bit difficult because we need more classes. His sentiments have been echoed by leaders in West Pokot, who say lack of strict measures leaves learners exposed. Schools along the West Pokot and El Marakwet border, which were affected by the floods, have not been rehabilitated. balls ili ipatikane maji ya kupambana na makali ya corona. Sababu, you would imagine bila maji, vile semu kama ina yasakua, itakua heat. In Itare area of Nakuru County, families evicted due to the construction of the dam say their children may not return to school as ordered. Sasa fitapu ili nyeshewa, iyo fitapu yote ya iyo siule imekwisha imeisha yote, manguo, uniform, imeraruka, in Uriri, Migori County, preparations for reopening are underway with a disinfection exercise targeting 150 private and public schools. Leaders here insist on safety first. And in Busia, County Commissioner Kipchumba Ruto has directed local administrators to ensure that all learners in the county return to school on Monday. <laughs> tutachukulia hatua ya kisheria au wasasi 
tuta arresti hawa, tutapeleka kutini na watastakiwa. Gena Kirori, NTV. And across the borders, Niger ruling party candidate and former minister Mohamed Bazoum has won the first round of the presidential election with a runoff slated for next month. Bazoum garnered 39% of the votes in last weekend's election. He will face former president Mahamane Osman, who won 16.99% in the February 20th runoff. Bazoum's ruling Nigerian Party of Democracy and Socialism is leading in the legislative vote, also held on Sunday with 80 out of the 165 seats and five diaspora seats remaining to be decided. Niger has been battered by jihadists on its southwestern border with Mali and on its southeastern frontier with Nigeria. Five years of violence has cost hundreds of lives with many more displaced. And it's time for some sporting action where Arsenal registered a third successive Premier League win by thrashing strugglers West Brom 4-0 at the Hawthorns. The Gunners' goals were scored by Kieran Tiane in the 23rd minute. Bukayo Saka away at St. Mary's Stadium on Monday night. West Brom, playing their fourth match under the new manager Sam Allardyce, remains second from bottom and six points from safety. This afternoon, Newcastle United take on Leicester City at the St. James Park as Chelsea host Manchester City at Stamford Bridge. And eventually, Lacazette with the looking for their fourth, Aubameyang. Lacazette down the middle, out it goes to Tierney. Several options in the middle, one of them is Lacazette, and it's a straightforward finish for the Frenchman to score yet another goal over the Christmas period, and this is becoming a rout. Now, champions Real Madrid went on top of the Spanish La Liga after beating Celta Vigo 2-0 at the Alfredo Di Stefano Stadium. Lucas Vazquez gave Real the lead after six minutes before Marco Asensio scored the second in the 53rd minute. Celta, who lost La Liga top scorer Iago Aspas to injury early in the second half. Victory lifted Real Madrid one point clear of the Atletico Madrid at the, at the top of the table, although Diego Simon side have three games in hand and travel to Alaves today. In other results, Real Betis played a one-all draw against Sevilla. Getafe lost 1-0 against Real Valladolid as Villarreal beat Levant 2-1 tonight. Huesca host Barcelona. Knocked across the line by Sean Weissman. Interval break and would set up Suso only three minutes into the second 45 to give Sevilla the lead in the derby. The penalty box, up step Canales, and this time he did get his fourth goal, sending Bono the wrong way from the spot and made it 1-1 eight minutes into the second half. Now, former Tottenham and Southampton boss Mauricio Pochettino has been appointed head coach of French League One champions Paris Saint-Germain. The Argentine, who succeeded Thomas to call, has signed a deal until 30 June 2022 with the option of extending for an extra 12 months. The 48-year-old who played for PSG between 2001 and 2003 has been out of work since being sacked by Spurs in November 2019. PSG are third in League One and will face Barcelona in the last 16 of the Champions League in February and March. German Tuchel was sacked in, on, on 29th December after two and a half years in charge. And that takes us to the close of NTV at One. Stay tuned for more programming. This is NTV. I could have soft and glowing skin. New Geisha Flex Soap.
with activated charcoal to give you soft and glowing skin. New Geisha Black Soap and New Geisha Moringa. Maji mdosi wangu ametupasi miangu ndani ya maji. Mdosi wako kwa saa. Venye nikirota ameniambia, ameniambia ajui na akimpigia simu. Ashiki. Hi! Guy! For the women who deserve more, Moped is now in Kenya and more than 40 countries with its nylon free surface. New Moped has unique softness and up to 100% protection. Your skin will love it. He is deep, he is personal, he is motivational. And I see this girl coming in, in a new entry. <laughs> Start again. Let me tell you. Whatever has been lost yeah. is nothing compared to what you get. But there's something you have to have. He's an entrepreneur. He's a minister of the word. Our ministry must also have practicality. Yeah. That, and I'm not saying every preacher, no, while it may put your experience, yeah. let's go out. Yeah. Let's get people in. For me, that's my calling. And is here to transform this world to a better place. This is the amazing story, the journey of Pastor Julian Kula. Change can be disruptive, but Business Daily has got you covered from Monday to Friday. Get evolving trends, ingenious business ideas, and the latest tech content in the new market dynamic, and exciting lifestyle content in the new normal environment. Business Daily. More possibilities. TV turning on your world. The following program has been rated GE. It is therefore suitable for general family viewing.